All right, so we're going to look and talk about serve mucks, which sounds totally cool and like it's going to be complicated. And I've put together a little readme file here and our repos that goes to 11 on GitHub, Golang Web Dev. And if you haven't followed me on Twitter yet, that's Twitter, Todd McLeod, because I'm trying to get 400 bazillion followers. And, uh, I followed you, but you didn't follow me back. I know, I'm that way. Well, but if you don't follow me back, I'm going to unfollow you. Okay, I'll go follow <laughs> Nina Roby. So you Nina Roby. There we go, we're following each other. Um, and if you haven't sent me money yet, you can PayPal me. So. We're going to learn about serve mucks and uh, goes to 11 Golang Web Dev. And then just come down here, third, oh, we're going to understanding net HTTP serve mucks. And so we're really sort of working the net HTTP package. And we start at the top. If you guys got enough at the top, you don't need that review anymore. Ken doesn't need it. Nina does. Jeremy, okay, good. All right, so the next thing is the serve mucks. And the first place to begin with serve mucks is just to look at this stuff here, which we'll see in a second, and then also to understand just what the heck a serve mux is. So if you look for multiplexer and define it and go to Wikipedia, it says in electronics, a multiplexer or mux is a device that selects one of several analog or digital input signals and forwards the selected input onto a single line. So one of several input signals and forward selected input into a single line. That is kind of what exactly a server does, right? One of several input signals, right, with these different requests coming in. And so one request might be at forward slash cat, and it might be method get. Another request might be at forward slash apply, and it might be method get. Another request might be method post at forward slash apply. So we have all these different things coming into the server. We call it a server, just colloquially, which isn't one of the words you could use to refer to it. We have all these different requests coming into the server, and the server has to, based upon all of those different lines coming in, right, you know, several input signals, it has to make decisions about what to do with them. Okay? And so that's where the term multiplexer mux comes from. It's not a one-to-one -one analogy with web servers, but that's kind of my understanding where it originated. And so in the Golang documentation, we have serve mux. Well, what, you know, they kind of like put both of them together, server, mux, serve mux. And so it's a server multiplexer. So when you hear the word router, when you hear the word server, when you hear request router, multiplexer, mux, serve mux, those are all synonymous. Web programming synonymous terms, okay? If I was saying server, you'd be fine. You'd be like, oh, it's the server. The server has to decide. But now, now there's obviously a little bit of a distinction and a little bit of a definition, like we are being a little bit more specific because part of the server is the multiplexer part. All right, there's many parts to the server, and the multiplexer part is the part that determines, do this, do that, this comes in, do that, that comes in, do this. And so the way that that will get implemented, we'll see that in a second. And so the very basic way of creating, you know, doing some routing, and I just called this routing, understanding net HTTP serve mux. Very basic way of doing some routing is we create a type, and then we attach that method to it, and then we create a, a variable of that type, and that type is now a handler because it has this method. It's implementing the handler interface, right? And so listen and serve asks for a handler so we gave it a handler and when somebody goes here listen and serve is going to run this method right where it got a request and it responds to that request and what's it going to do it's going to run our code and that's the code it's going to run and so we're going to get the request url path and we do a switch on it and if they came to cat then we write back to the response this code and if they go to the forward slash dog because we're just looking at the path here, then we write back this code, right, to the response. And so that was one way of doing some multiplexing or some routing. Another way we could do it is like this, where we again have our type hot dog, and you know we attach this method which makes it a handler, and then we create another one hot cat, and we attach the same method, makes it a handler, 
And then we create a variable of that type, another variable of that type. And now we're going to create a new serve mux multiplexer. And this is where we go and we look at the documentation. So in the documentation, we don't need that one anymore. Right? When we create, when we call new serve mux, we get a pointer to type serve mux. When we have a pointer to type serve mux, we have all these methods available to us. Because we have this method right here, a serve mux implements the handler interface. Since a serve mux implements the handler interface, and since listen and serve wants a handler, right, we can pass the, the, the mux we've created in as the handler. In addition, what a serve mux does, and this is kind of in the internals, so this is in the language, right, or in the standard library, like we don't have to know the internals of how the language works. But back inside, what we could do is we could attach routes for that serve mux, that multiplexer, that thing which determines this comes in, then do that. This other thing comes in, then do this other thing. We could attach routes, a pattern, forward slash cat, forward slash dog, to run a certain handler. Okay, so handle this route, and when that route comes in, do this handler. So just like we did it manually right here, cat, do this, dog, do this, we can now do this, create a serve mux, and we could say, I'm just going to switch those, cat, do this, dog, do that, right? I don't know, is it better like this because I have dog, cat? Maybe in this original example, I need to flip those and do dog up top. I think that's the case. That got screwy. There we go. Right? Because now dog, cat, dog, cat, dog, cat. That's better. So that's, that's what we do. So we just put in our routes. And now we could add as many routes as we want to our multiplexer, our mux. And uh, then we pass our mux into listen to serve, and we just create all of these different, you know, handlers for, you know, handle this route, handle this route, which is why they're called handlers, right? We, this is the handler interface, right? If you have that method, you are of type handler. So we just create all those different handlers and then tell the mux to handle it and give it the route and give it the handler, and it's handling it. So it all kind of sounds good when you get your, your mind wrapped around it. That's why I like tonight, and for a year I've struggled with how to explain NetHttp, but just like for whatever reason, you guys are the glory class, I finally got clarity on like, this is, you have to start explaining NetHttp with type handler, then you go to listen and serve, right? And then you look at the, re the request that's part of the handler, the serve HTTP request, response writer and pointer to a request and you look at the response writer and then we look at the routing and now we're looking at the mux and next after this we're going to look at something called handle funk where because this is a little bit awkward right having to do a type and then attach a method to it and so there's another way that we can make it a little bit more streamlined and we're going to look at that soon the penny finally dropped good Right? So it's it the quality of the teacher makes a difference, man. And I wish I I had a great teacher for four weeks, but um it's I've been that, um, Caleb Doxy. But but for uh for the last year it's just been me and recorded videos, you know, and trying to Are you still in contact and, with Caleb? Yeah, you know, I mean I could email him if I want, he emails back. But um